at Don Joe 2012 asks, I've been cycling for six years, but my performance has plateaued in recent seasons. I spend about eight hours a week on the bike. Any ideas, some ideas about getting his, his uh, plateau to break so he can start getting improvement again. So let's get down to things that are realistic. What can you do? The most, the, the most common way to solve this problem is to make a big change in your training. There are only two things that go into your training, duration of the workout and intensity of the workout. If right now you're doing lots of high intensity, but not much duration, swap it around. Start doing lots of duration, not much intensity. Do that for about six weeks. Or the other way around. If you're doing lots of low intensity and very little high intensity, swap it around. Start doing more high intensity and less duration. Do that for about six weeks. And what that will do is it'll cause the body to make a shift. This shift happens at the muscle, it happens uh, in your blood, it happens in your metabolism. All these shifts are taking place based on your training. So what you need to do once you've gotten to the point where there's a plateau and there's no more changes taking place, change your training. Do one of the uh, do the opposite of what you've been doing. And that should bring you around to something which is um, a different plateau, if you will, a higher level of performance. But realize that it's going to change over time. Also, if you, you, if you stay with that method of training over a long period of time, we'll go through the same thing again. You'll, you'll plateau. We need to go back and change it again the other way. And athletes typically do this because if, they're aiming, if you're aiming for a race, which is several weeks down the road, maybe even months down the road, you're going to train in a certain way. Like in the base period, there's going to be lots of duration, lots of volume, not much intensity. And as you start moving toward the last several weeks before the race, let's say the last 10, 12 weeks before the race, you'll change that. You'll change over to start doing more intensity, more race-like training, and less emphasis on duration. And that's what brings you to a peak for the race. And then after that race, let's, let's call this an A priority race. After that A priority race, now you start to think about your next A priority race, which may be another eight weeks away. So now we change the pattern back to going into base training again for a few weeks, and then we come back to the higher intensity build period training for a few weeks. So this pattern goes on throughout the year. If you get stuck in one pattern all the time, yeah, you're gonna definitely plateau. You're not gonna get any benefits anymore out of it. Your body will adapt to it fully. So all we have to do is shake it up a little bit by doing something different, and that will get you off of that plateau. Do you recommend, it, do you recommend fasted training? And if so, what is the benefit? Let me explain it. First of all, fasted training mean, basically means not eating breakfast before a ride. So if you're going to do a workout in the morning, you skip breakfast that morning and you're fasted. You haven't, you've been, I assume during the night you were sleeping. So we may have something like eight to nine hours, maybe without having any, any food taken in and you go for a ride. Well, there are some benefits to that that have been shown in the research. Um, what it does, it appears to improve your fat burning um, as opposed to using carbohydrate for fuel. You begin to use more fat for fuel. What that means is you're improving your aerobic conditioning. Um, your body aerobically prefers to use fat for fuel. So we're forcing it to use fat for fuel instead of using carbohydrate. Whereas if you ate a meal before you went for that morning ride, your body would depend on the carbohydrate you had in that meal to uh, propel you through the workout so you wouldn't get nearly as much uh, fat burning going on. Now, does that mean you should be doing it all the time? Probably not. Um, it's probably the sort of thing that you wanna do on uh, intermittently, like at certain times you decide you're gonna do a certain ride on, let's say Tuesdays and Fridays, you're gonna do a, a fasted ride. That's quite all right. Go out and do your ride, whatever it may be. Just be careful with the downside. The downside is if you're doing a long ride, you may wind up bonking on the ride. You, you're going to run out of energy perhaps because there may not be much carbohydrate stored. And so if that's the case, you go out for a four hour ride, you may find a struggle to get back to the house again, have to call somebody to come get you. Uh, that's probably not the best thing to do. You want to start off doing this very gradually. Start off by doing some of your shorter workouts fasted if you, if you want to try it out. Do that for a couple of weeks and then try doing a little bit longer workout and so forth until you realize your body's adapting and then, yeah, you can probably get some benefits out of it for most people, 
There are some people who are already very good at fat burning, so they probably won't get much out of it. But those who are not may get a lot of benefit. But realize your training may suffer also. You may be really wiped out for the rest of the day from having a longer ride done without any uh, food before the ride started. Oliver A. asks, um, I have a busy period of work coming up and I'm worried about losing fitness. Can this be mit mitigated? A very common problem. Um, athletes experience this all the time. We are, our lives aren't always on the same uh, pattern. We don't always have everything exactly the same every week after week after week. We sometimes have weeks where, for example, um, we've got more work to do. We've got just excess work. We're going to be working overtime. We're going to be working on the weekends, whatever it may be to get, to get caught up on work, or maybe that we're going on a vacation uh, with the family, not going to have a bike available for a week. Uh, and there, so there could be lots of reasons why this happens. And it, it happens to everyone. Everyone has this happen. I've never met anyone yet who was able to get through the entire season without making adjustments to their training plan um, from where, where they started the early in the season. The one way of mitigating this or keeping this from becoming a, a too much of a problem is let's, let's say you're going to take one week where you're going to have to decrease uh, the training load because of work, let's say. So what you might do then the week before is increase your training load by 20%. So if you normally train 10 hours a week, train 12 hours that week. Keep it the same thing as you normally do but just increase the amount of volume you're doing. Then you have your down week where you're getting uh, reduced training, do whatever you can do during that week, if anything at all. And then the week after, come back and do 20% above your normal training again. So again, instead of doing 10 hours, do a 12 hour week that week. This won't mitigate entirely. You won't be able to make up, you can't make up for, for an entire week of, uh, of lost training. You cannot make that up by doing other stuff it just doesn't work that way. Your body can't handle that, but we can lower the, the impact on your fitness going forward by simply making sure the, the week prior to that has a, a bit more training, like 20%. I would be very hesitant to go beyond 20%. Going beyond 20% is going to set you up for uh, potentially uh, being really, really overreached and extremely tired. And that causes things like illness and injuries and all kinds of things can come from that. 20% is safe. It's higher than normal, but it's safe. 20% before in the weekend, week before, and 20% in the week after will help you to control how much, what your point is as you come back into the normal training again after this three-week period in my example. <laughs>